Good evening and welcome to another episode of Real Estate on Track with Sanjeev and Alka and Eja, the brother-sister team. We are happy to be here again today. Pia is not with us, so I am hosting the show and right. Smiling Alka is with me. That's right. And uh, welcome again. We hope you tune in every week. We hope you are liking the show. But the goal is not that you like the show. The goal is that you learn That's from the show. Because... Liking is entertainment. Learning, this is one of the biggest investments that people make. 100%. Or you make. One of the biggest investments for most people. And if it is, then the pitfalls that are in there, things that go wrong in a, a transaction, there are many. That's right. And you make a mistake and it can be very expensive at certain times. You, you look at the right things through the right agent's viewpoint. Somebody who's experienced, but more than that, somebody who cares for you. We've said that again and again. Hiring an agent by going online and looking for somebody who paid a lot of money in advertising and now you got them. You go to TV ads, Alka, today, you see the ads and these people say, we'll give you an agent at no cost to you and you all that stuff, but they are actually charging the agent. Of course. Agent of course. is paying a fee to them for advertising or a referral fee or whatever that is which means you're not guaranteed top agents by any means. Now, the ad will have some seller in there and saying, we got top dollars. But remember, it's a paid commercial. Yeah. So you want to be careful that you hire the right person Absolutely. who's representing you, who's doing your best, the best for you, and putting your interest over there. So, Alka, that said, Let's talk about, you've been doing this for 30 years. Yeah, that's right. Let's I can't talk, believe it. Let's, you've probably seen many pitfalls in a transaction. Yes. How about we take, whether we talk about the buyer side, whether we talk about the tenant side, or seller side, each, yeah. Yeah, any side of a transaction. Yeah. What are the things that you have seen go wrong in a transaction that, in hindsight, they were preventable? Now, some things are not preventable. Yeah. We know that in a yeah. transaction. There's so many parties involved in it, including the emotions. Absolutely. Sometimes deal will fall because sellers and buyers just couldn't get along. That's right. For whatever reason anymore yeah. at the tr end. Yeah. And the emotions come in in such a big purchase. Yeah. But let's talk about those other things that couldn't be prevented. Right. But then there are many things that can be. So let's talk. What have you faced that you say... Don't do this. Be careful. And again, we are your resource to help you. Right. So anything we're telling, who you're working with, where you're working, we, we don't know. It doesn't matter. Be careful about what Alka is about to say. And I'll add certain things if I remember. Of course, yeah. of course. And, and like, right, feel like you said, right? In math, you hear X plus Y equals Z or whatever your formula is. But it, two plus two is two four. Two plus two is four. Okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, let's yeah. make it simple. <laughs> let's make it simple. Um, I was trying to sound very, uh, yeah, very yeah, yeah. You but want I'll to, keep you, it simple. You want to sound like very genius. Yes, I can that understand. Is, you're trying to be simple, but in in when it's two humans, like you said, there's so many components that there's never just oh this can happen in a transaction. There's so many variables that can happen in a transaction. So there's never really a way to say your transaction will be smooth because you've done this. Because something will come out of the air and you're like, oh my God, I never expected this. Now, where is this coming from? So, but we'll give you some points which are, at least will get you on track, all pun intended, to make sure that you are, you know, are going in the right direction. So as a seller, if you are, I think prepping your home on for the market is one of the best ways to not have a pitfall later on. So you want to make sure that all the tips we've given in your home, like making sure your grading is okay, making sure all your windows are going up and down. There's a checklist that we send right. to so all our I, sellers. I guess, I guess it may sound to our listeners like small things. What, what's, why is that a pitfall? It's a pitfall because when the inspection is done and they, now the inspector is opening the window and doesn't open and the water is going towards the home. That will create yes. a fear in buyer's mind of small certain preventable things. So, very good point. These are small things, but very big things. Absolutely. So, what happens is in today's market, the buyer is paying top dollar, right? When the buyer walks in, they're already worried about whether or not the house is going to appraise or not. And it may or may not appraise, and they have to cover that difference. Now, when they do the home inspection, and the home inspection has 
however many small small things it becomes to them like oh my god i have to spend this much money too if the buyer can if the seller can take those uh preventative steps and make that list smaller and i remember every inspector is going to have a list so you want to minimize your list so that the buyer always walks away thinking this is a great home always want to make it win win for everybody so you walk out happy and you go in happy right so i i guess what we are talking about is if you live in a home for 15 20 30 years yeah. you don't know everything you don't you're not it's not that you don't know anything you're immune to everything you're worried about how my furniture looks and not necessarily looking at the leaking pipe because you figured out how to put that you know cellophane tape which was not the right tape but you've done the jugaad right because you said okay you know we could make this happen but that's not the right thing that's going to be and we just mosey on and kind of live and most of us live sort of ram bharose and if it's not fixed if it's not broken don't fix it right but so, you need so to but if, if as a seller if you walk as if you're a buyer in that's your right. own home yes that will solve no many times you'll walk as a buyer and saying oh this is perfect but then you're not being logical that's at all that's because you're being not emotional that's one of the reasons why we do that preliminary walk through with the seller and say okay from our viewpoint these are the things that we need to we right. you need and you right, to do and, and i need to make a certain point here when your good realtor walks with you and tells you about issues in the home please don't think they are against you that's correct they are walking with you as your friend absolutely as your physician as, as your, your team member as your team member yeah. not putting your home down yeah. but trying to bring your home up there's a major difference 100% the buyer will want to put your home down yes your realtor a good realtor is trying to bring your home up that pleases the buyer that's a lot that's right, right? yeah so important impo- important now yeah. you were talking and i was thinking all of a sudden a picture came in my mind you're staying in your home and we've seen so many homes the seller takes an extension wire puts a heater someplace else there's a long 25 foot orange wire stuck in the basement outlet someplace that is not grounded you know that is a major problem it could be a fire it's a fire hazard right now you say my basement is heated because you put that heater there but it's not grounded properly it's not the wire can be a fire a so basement. that is a problem that you can solve so quickly as a yeah. seller yes for you maybe you made i mean you you shouldn't even do that if you're living in your home yes. first of all you never know because you're creating a danger for your family That's but true. let's say you did it and it was okay for 25 years it doesn't mean it has been there like this for 25 years yeah. no the buyer's inspector will not let it go through yeah and the buyer now it, it may be a $5 fix and you say oh it's only a $5 fix and fix it for your benefit that 100% otherwise it will add up like if they are doing this lousy work what else is lousy in the home That's right? right and what you finish before the or what you fix before the inspection costs you a lot less in time and headache and money than what you fix after the inspection because now the buyer is going to scrutinize it they're going to make sure that they, they're going to first feel bad about it then they're going to scrutinize your repair then it's just going to cost you more time in place so and and talking about repairs please make sure you do them right yes so if you do patchwork of a patchwork it will still stay a patchwork so be careful yes. that you are doing it right hire the right professional some of us think we know how to patch and i don't and know. the truth is we don't and you can see it and people are looking at the whole thing there's a home the deck is falling apart the wood wood is crumbling and the guy says my this is perfect deck i'm not going to do anything about it then the buyer is going to take it out in the inspection so protect before the problem becomes a problem yeah right? a lot of times what happens is when there it's something obvious as a deck right the buyer takes it out even before they offer some in their mind they're like oh my god i have to replace the deck then the inspector comes in and says that and now you're negotiating the deck second time around so you don't want to do those things this is what we have is like a, a home sale is like a funnel right and there are holes in your funnel which is the analogy you put a lot of times is all we're trying to tell you is how to plug in those holes so that your whole success can happen and you can get to closing the repairs piece is just one of the very very small holes that you want to plug right and and elka you talked about funnel what a beautiful example the home sale starts what are the pitfalls pitfalls are the uh, the buyer changes his or her mind yes, during the transaction 
That's during your attorney review period right. that could happen. During the attorney review period. Absolutely. The inspection is an issue. Financing is an issue. The CO in your home is an issue. Uh, there are so many issues that come into picture. We had a home we were talking about. The buyer had left the home in a truck and the seller had bankrupt, declared bankruptcy the night before and the home didn't close. So, so many pitfalls yeah. in a seller transaction, in a buyer transaction, you can close all, many holes. Some holes just cannot be closed because how yeah. do you stop a seller from declaring a bankruptcy when you're the best buyer in the world? He's done it yes. for his financial reasons, not to hurt you, yeah. but you are hurt at the end at that point. Absolutely. So, like we said, many things are preventable, many are not. That's right. And, you're, when, and when, the second thing is when you are um, going for your appraisals, there are strategies that you can use to make sure that your appraisals come in at the right time, or at the right numbers, right? If you have repairs that you have done, itemize your repairs, write them down for your appraisers to make sure that these are the things that we've done. Appraisers don't know what you have done and when they have been done. Now again, some people will say, I replaced a dishwasher 15 years ago. That's not an upgrade. It's what you've done within the last five to 10 years. Remember, we spoke about it in one of our shows, is kitchens, I think it was last show, kitchen and bathrooms give you a lot of money back. So it itemized, these type of repair itemized are gonna be much, much better for you and get you that money back. So write them down so that you can give them to the appraiser. And, and again, Alka, I think there's an important point that you bring to mention here. Kitchens and bathrooms give you the return, but kitchens and bathrooms can cost you money too. Let's say you have a million dollar home and you put a kitchen that was worthy of $400,000 home. A buyer is going to come and say, I'm going to replace this kitchen. Now you put a $20,000 kitchen, but the buyer says, this kitchen is useless. I'm going to put a $50,000 kitchen. All of a sudden, that kitchen will be liability because you cut the corners and you put a kitchen in there. This happens with investors a lot. A lot, yeah. They'll put the wrong thing and then they say, put this money, or they'll cut the corners at, in the furnace or whatever. Yeah. And all of a sudden, these things become an expense because if the buyer has to remove it and put the new thing, now it's costing you more as a seller. Absolutely. Or as an investor if you bought a home to resell it. So be careful the price matches. Now let's say it was a $400,000 home and you put a $100,000 kitchen and then you say some buyer should pay me $100,000, that won't happen either. Every home price value <coughs> range has a certain value that you can put in it. Absolutely. Over improvement and under improvement are a pitfall, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you, you make your upgrade according to your neighborhood, according to your house, according to your price point, right? You have to say, but on the same token to what you had said, if you're a million dollar home and your kitchen is looking old, you can guarantee no buyer is walking in because the buyers don't want to, unless they can under price your home a little bit, they want to walk in into a ready product. So make sure the house is priced according to the upgrades, but make sure the upgrades reflect the price point that you're right. at. And again, when we talk a million dollar, we're just talking as a number. As a number. Because yeah. million dollar in some in homes market, means nothing. Yeah. So you can buy, go to buy townhouses today for 800, 900,000, a million dollars townhouses. Some areas I was searching uh, I mean, for we're house. talking about our area. You go to certain areas in New York and you cannot buy it for $5 million. So now talk about like Summit, Short Hills, live. you look up to a million, like there is like this old <laughs> dilapidated houses and it's like, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so when, it's we, all say, area when we say 400, million we are talking about to give you a feel of the price exactly that doesn't mean if you live in a million dollar home that is this little that you say oh that's what they were talking about that's we are only talking about a reference point 100 right? yes and, and we're we're assuming that you understand that but we want to clarify and, well. and again we are here for you as your resource or number we are available call us consult us talk to us wherever you are 732-494-2211 we are available, uh, we are happy to guide you the best we can. I mean, again, we don't know all the areas. So at some point we may have to say, sorry, we don't know that. But basics never change. Right? That's right. So yeah. let's repeat the number again in your voice. 732-494-2211. You know what, that was a test for Alka. I want to make sure you remember the office number. What do you mean if I remember the office <laughs> I'm number? I'm teasing, <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so that, I mean, those are just, Appraise, and then well, you have to have a CO that Bhaiya mentioned, right? Which is called a certificate of continued occupancy. Now, most towns need that as a seller. 
you want to make sure you apply for that early on in your transaction because if there are any open permits or any permits that you've not gotten for a basement or for a furnace or for a hot water heater, you have time to comply with that. You can get your compliance permits. It's important because otherwise the township does not give you dates for two to three weeks out and your closings are going to get delayed if you wait till the last minute. Yes, it does cost you a little bit of money, but it's minuscule and, compared and to the you, transaction. You know what? And it's, it's, this pitfall happens so many times. So many times. People wait that I will do the CO when this happens. But what happens when you wait for that time, the township, like Alka said, now doesn't have a date. Yeah. Let's say they have a date and they come and there's a problem. Now you have to fix that problem. That's right. And then now you have to, have to go for back. another date. Yes. And now they don't have a date. Yes. So you see what happens. Let's say you had to move someplace and be there by May 30th. Your CO is not ready till July, till June 29th. Your move has been delayed by a month. Yeah. The buyer's mortgage commitment in the meanwhile might have expired. That's right. You see how it becomes a trickle effect? Yeah. Everything starts falling apart for Absolutely. wrong reasons. Yeah, this is a, a very important piece of information. Now, some towns do not need a CO. There are some towns that don't need a CO, which is called a certificate of occupancy. But if you do need a CO and you want to check your town, and again, talk to your realtor, you want to make sure you comply and you apply for it right away because yeah. you don't want to get stuck. I, it's so. In, in this lesson, we're talking about follow the timeline carefully. Timeline matters. <coughs> if there are uh, uh, deadlines for certain things, the timeline even matters more. Absolutely. Because if the buyer's commitment expires and they have to supply all the paperwork, the buyer at some point may say, you know what, forget it, I'm not doing it. Or pay for my expenses That's right. before I can do it. So small things but small things become big things. And then they become a hassle for you for no reason, which, you can, which can be avoided. And then you want to make sure towards the time, at the time of closing that your home is vacant and clean. Now, a lot of people will say, no, I don't want to clean it. You have to leave the house in a way you want your home to be represented to the buyer. So law says you need to keep it broom clean condition. Most of the sellers will leave it in a nice condition. If you want to leave your home in a nice condition, leave flowers, leave a note for the buyer, leave it happy. So that when the buyer walks in, the buyer says, oh, this is such a nice seller. So even if you've had some rough transactions through, through like rough waves through the transaction, at the end, it'll all get sorted out. That is such a beautiful point. Don't leave with animosity. Yes. Leave your home that you lived in happily for somebody for happiness. That 50, 100, 200 dollars in the transaction of 500 million, 200 million, 2 million dollars is so minimal but it reminds the buyer of you again and again and 100%. again. 100%. When we bought our first home, we had paid full price. We walked into the home and these people have removed the wallpaper from the bathroom. Now we had given them zero hassle, zero. We didn't even know all this stuff that we are talking about. We was, our realtor was never with us. We did the inspection, nobody was there to tell us anything. And this guy took the bathroom faucet and the wallpaper. Wallpaper? And we, right, and we were like, Shh, looks sound stupid but they did now obviously we didn't care we didn't want the wallpaper it was different but they took it and 30 years later we remember it yeah now they wouldn't i thought they were nice sellers why they took it maybe they thought they can take it maybe it had emotional value maybe, maybe they were not doing it to hurt us at yeah. all but wallpaper who takes wallpaper how do you take wallpaper yeah but they, but they did now i don't know how they how it happened why it happened Maybe their intentions were good, but don't do anything yeah. that leaves a mark for you that somebody feels, even if they were going to do it anyhow, that they feel, you know what, what kind of yeah. lousy seller was this? Absolutely. Remember, you so want blessings you of people, not... 100%. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Walk in, let them come in, give you blessings, and you give them blessings to go on. Karma is a big thing when you're buying or selling a home. It's your biggest investment. You give out good karma, right. you'll get good karma And I think back. the same goes with the buyer too. Yes. You're a buyer, at the end, you feel you can squeeze the seller because you yeah, know don't do somehow, it. don't do it. That yeah. few hundred dollars of squeezing is not, not going to be it. worth it in the lifetime. Let, let it be, even if they were bad, let it be. Let your karma, like Alka uses the word karma all the time, let your karma be your driving force. Absolutely. And everything will fall in place. Absolutely. So I hope you got a lot of answers today. I hope, in fact, here's what we would love to hear from you. Are there pitfalls that you should have, you felt you should have known, 
or were there pitfalls in your transaction you wish you had known That's before right. they be became pit? Yes. We would love to hear from you, alka at entregrealty.com, sanjeev at entregrealty.com, pia at itvgold.com. Even if pia is not here, she'll get the email. And we would love to answer that or learn from that maybe. Even if we don't answer, we'll learn what else to protect one of our future clients with. 100%. Help us. We yeah. would love to hear from you. I mean, you. chances are we've seen everything, but chances are we haven't. Absolutely. So let's learn from you. It's a give and take, and that will be your give so that we can give to other people too. When you give, so when you sow a seed, the so flowers that come out of it are many. Yes. And then f those flowers seed, and then all of a sudden more come out of it. It's amazing how nature works. Sow and reap. Yeah, 100%. And what you sow, and you shall reap. So, so good and reap good. That's right. And uh, thank you for tuning in. And we appreciate you being here with us every week. The shows are recorded. They are available on our website at www.ontrackrealty.com. You might have tuned in for the first time and you don't know what is what are we talking about and what have we have talked about before www.ontrackrealty.com or shows are there, recorded there. Watch them and give us a call if you have any questions. On Track Realty in North Edison, near Metro Park train station, 732-494-2211. And God bless you. Bye. Thank you.